Esau despises, or it says that, he despised his birthright. Uh, he, had, he had no means, means to try to bargain or get it revoked or either talk to his father about it. With his uh, necessity, when, uh, about the bargain which his, his necessity had made, his profoundness had confirmed, and by his subsequent neglect, it depended, he put the bargain past recall. Okay, let's remember that we all need to be content uh, in Hebrews 3.15, 3, Yeshua said, Be content. Why? I'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. What a promise. He never will. And now this is for the younger, the kids and the younger people. Abraham was a true believer. Jacob sometimes was a deceiver. Isaac was offered for sacrifice. And Esau turned out not to be so nice. See the dogs like it too. <laughs> these words are not meant to be funny, nor do I, do I get, do it for gain or money. Many words were put in the Bible to help us for our survival. And by the way, with God's help, let's all start a revival. Amen. <laughs> Good job. Thank you, Tom. I'd like to uh, go ahead and call up the worship team as we prepare to enter our time of worship. And uh, feel free to dance, to clap, to sing, do all three. <clears throat>
upon his name, made known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted, exalted, proclaim that his name is
By the way, didn't that the, the, the set drums add something really nice? Yes. Jason came over the Praise the Lord. <laughs> God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, thank you for your presence. We ask you now, Lord, that you will speak to us, Lord God. We pray that you'll put your words into my mouth and cause us to have open ears and minds and hearts to be receptive to what you have to say to us, so that your words are heard above my words and your voice above my voice. Lord God, let each one have a sense that we've heard from you, oh God, and change our lives. I pray this for Shem Yeshua HaMashiach for years. Amen. This afternoon I got the, I received the sad news that um, <laughs> Bishop Byron Johnson, a very, very, very great friend of this uh, congregation, passed away today. And um, so I called, I called Mark, Mark Brown, who's been, been the leader over there. Um, he's sort of taken over a lot of, uh, a lot of the administration a few years back. But, um, but Bishop Johnson was, a, was an overseer of uh, New, New, New Wineskin, those people uh, had a real love for Israel, love for Jewish people. Very, very wonderful friends of ours, and and uh, so as I, I talked to Mark, and I was praying, praying with him, and I, and I prayed, and and the sense struck me that uh, that he was sort of taking over from his mentor, just like Joshua took took over from the mentor, his mentor Moses, and uh, and so. Uh, and so I'd like us to turn to Joshua chapter 1. And we find out that God, you know, a lot of us want a comfort zone. We want to stay in that comfort zone. But God is going to put challenges into our path. And if you don't face the challenge, and if you don't take on the challenge, you really can't move on in life. And you, you, you will be stuck and, 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 and frustrated. God doesn't give us all the same challenges, but he, he will put challenges into our lives. And they become progressive, which means that as we go through life, God expects us to build on what we have experienced already, and then he moves on. And the challenges of the past and the become, become the challenges for the present, and the challenges for the present become the challenges, lead to the challenges of, of the future. And so we, 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 find, we find Joshua chapter 1, and uh, God speaks to him and says, in the very first, first verse, Now it came about after the death of Moses. You know, this, this book sort of hits on the run. It's like a, a punch to the gut or a punch to the jaw. Um, you know, here is here um, here in Joshua, Moses has been his friend, like a father to him for years. He's been a mentor, and uh, and, and so, but now he's gone, and, and and so the book reflects this opening statement reflects the situation of Joshua. Sometimes we think, well. Uh, God just uh, God just going to kind of life is just going to kind of settle us down, you know, like a like 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 a just a glide in and a smooth settling down on the ground. But sometimes it comes with a what comes with a thud, and that's what happened with with, with Moses and Joshua. It came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. But Adonai spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, and said, and, and, and say, My servant Moses is dead. Could he be more blunt? No. 
You know, I mean, that's pretty blunt. And, and, and it, it is a statement, you know, he doesn't put it delicately. Now, sometimes God does. God knows where, where, where we are. Um, and, I know that, and I know that God had been preparing Joshua for this time. Um, God always equips people to do what he calls them to do. And, 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 and he, he, um, he, he, he doesn't call, he, he, he does not call the repair, he repairs, he repairs the call. And, uh, and so um, it's very important to bear that in mind. So God had been, God had been repairing this. And some people respond to, respond to that. Now you have the, 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 con the contrasting uh, circumstances of Jonah. Because I believe that Jonah knew for a long time that God was going to send him to Nineveh. Um, and, and, but, you know, someday God's going to send me to the Assyrians, those hated, uh, hated Assyrians. But then the day came and God sent him, Kum Lechel Nineveh. When he said, Kum, arise. You know, that word says the time for someday is over, now it's today. And so the time for you, time the thing for you to do right now is get up and go. And so he got up and went, but not in the, not toward the Nineveh. He got in the boat and <laughs> headed west towards Spain, towards <laughs> and, uh, and and he just you know and he, he figured he was going on a whale of a vacation. But, <laughs> um, I know. He was waiting for his, for his ship to come in. But, uh, anyway. We see. We see. He was not shipless. But uh, anyway, um, but, but Joshua was up to it, and so God called him. He said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, so now arise, you and all these people, cross over this Jordan to the land that I am going to give them. To, to B'nai Israel, the children of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I'm giving to you. Now, what a statement that is. You know what? God tells us that. He tells us that if you'll, if you'll, if you'll, if you'll follow me, and you know, every place where you, the sole of your foot treads, that you follow my plan, my will, my instructions, I've given to you. Now, the question is, are we going to believe it? Now, God doesn't tell you to go, he, he, he does not promise to give you every place the sole of your foot treads when you're going to the path of Mark back there, or the path of, of Jonathan here, or, or the path of Nick back there, or, or, or the path of Amy over there. Now, God, God has a path for each of you. Um, but if you follow the path that God tells you, He will give you every place, if every place where the sole of your foot treads. In other words, God says God's intention, because He has the highest aspirations. Nobody has higher aspirations for your life than God than God does. I remember the four spiritual laws began. It was uh, something developed by Candace Crusade, and uh, and for, for sharing the Messiah. And the very first law was, you know that God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. And, uh, and, and so God had a plan for, for Joshua. He said, every place where the sole of your foot treads, I'm giving to you. As I spoke to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon to the great river, the, the, the Frat, the Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea, the Mediterranean, toward the toward the setting of the sun, toward the far toward the west. No one will be able to stand before you. In other words, actually, the the, the, the way it's phrased is that a man will not be able to stand before you. The verb actually means to set yourself. That doesn't mean people aren't going to try to get it. That that it, it, it does not mean they're not going to place themselves to block your advance, but they won't be able to get any traction. It'll be like they're standing on ice, and when they try to brace themselves, set themselves to stop you, they will just slip and slide, and they'll go, in the, in, 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 in the words of 
in, in, of, of, of all, all Simon that goes slip sliding away. And uh, so, um, so he says, every, he says, no man will be able to stand before you. Uh, uh, and he says, but then he says, uh, he says, all the days of your life. And then he says this very profound verse, Ka'asher ha'iti im Moshe. Just as I was with Moses. You know, the word, the, the word was, it could have, he, God could have used the imperfect tense. But he used the, 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 the perfect tense, which sees the action of the verb as one point on a timeline, making it very decisive. Which means, just as I was definitely with Moses, or I have been definitely with Moses, or you could even project it into the future, because Moses at the time that God is speaking is, is with God. Uh, and, and Hebrew verb tense is not so much important for the, for, for, for the time as it is the kind of the action. Not just the, the, the time of the action is not, not, not as important. It's not, it's not specified so much by the, by the verb of the, by the tense of the verb. English verbs are very important. Their past, their present, their future. You, you see them, you know exactly what time, what time it, it, it is intended. But, but with Hebrew verbs, verb tense is not so important. You go by context. And so, and so even though people tend to think of the perfect tense as the past tense, it can be, it can be past, present, or, or future. It is the kind of action. And the perfect tense means it is definite and decisive. And so there is no question that God was with Moses. When God parted the Red Sea, when God brought water out of the rock, when God defeated the Amalekites, when God brought manna, and God did all of those great miraculous things, there was no question that God was with Moses. And so, and so God says to Joshua, I know the thing that you are afraid of is that God was with Moses, but, you know, will God be with me? And God says to him, and we need to hear this verse, I am or I will be with you. And as a matter of fact, and yeah, I think is better to translate it because when Moses was, 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 was before the burning bush, and God was speaking to him, and he told him, and if I'm shouting too, up too loud, some of them get excited, and, I, and I've, I've got a microphone, I forget I've got a microphone. So if I blast anybody out, please raise your hand. But, uh, and he said, he, he said, when, 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 when Moses was in front of the burning bush, and God sent him, go to Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses said, who shall I tell the people? They're going to ask, who has sent me? And God gave him an answer. He said, I am. That is the first person in perfect tense of the, of the verb haya, the verb to be. And, and, and I am that which I am. And here he uses that same verbal form. And so I think it's more appropriate to translate it just as I was, just as I have been, am with Moses, I am is with you. The same God who spoke to Moses from the burning bush is with Joshua. Think about that. And God put that into the scriptures. He directed Moses to put that, or Moses, Joshua in this case. He directed Joshua to put that into the scripture. Why? Because if it's in the scripture, it is designed, the Spirit of God directed Joshua to write this because the words of the scriptures, even though there are certain applications directed specifically to the, to, to the parties involved, if they're in the scriptures, principles apply to all people in all circumstances and all times. And so God, God is saying to you, Ka asher ha'iti in Moshe, or Ka asher ha'iti in, Yo, in Yehoshua, Joshua, or Ka asher ha'iti in Jeff Adler, if Yehimach, I am, I am as with you, with Tom, 
with Jeremiah, with Selah, with Lori, with Lou, with Sandra, with her mask, with, with Sandra back there. It's an inside joke. We have this joke that I hope she, she showed up over something with without her mask, and I didn't recognize her. She put the mask on, and this is who she was. <laughs> the effects of COVID. <laughs> but God is with you. That's what God wants you to know. You know, as, as you face the challenges, the, the danger is to shrink back from it. God says, go full steam ahead. Don't get ahead of me, but don't fall behind me. You know, move on toward the, toward the, toward the challenges. Rabbi Paul said, forgetting what is behind, I press on for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is through Yeshua HaMashiach Abelman which is through Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord. And so, and so he says, just as I was with Moses, if I am is with you, I will not fail you or forsake you. And, 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 and the, the, the word fail there actually means to allow, to, to allow us to slip through his fingers. There are no whoops moments with God. He's not butterfingers. You know, uh, he will not drop you. You are in the palm of his hand. Yeshua made a statement, no man shall pluck them out of my hand. And he won't let you slip, slide, or fall through his fingers. Chazak, be strong. That talks about, that, that, that talks about attitude. But he, he says, be strong and courageous. That verb, um, uh, uh, amas, me, the, the, well, uh, chazak refers to strength of attitude. Amas actually gives a sense of the action that follows. I've, I've, set, my, I've set my heart, I've focused on the goal, on the, on the Lord who's there, and I'm following him. But now I'm going to take actions because faith without works is dead, Jacob said. Some of you know that book by another name, Jacob. He, even in the Greek, it, it's Jacob. But he says, he, he says, faith without works is dead. In other words, people say, oh, I have faith, I trust in the Lord. What are you doing to follow up, to act on that, on the basis of that faith? Where it says, Kazakh, be strong. And it's like, uh, and, and, and the, and the, 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 the courageous means, um, it, it is, the, it is like the role you set yourself, you, you, you take a stand, and it's like the, uh, the, the offensive line of the Colts. Um, Chris, uh, 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 Wentz is standing, by, is standing there behind his line. And and and, uh, and and the the, and the the defensive line charges. They want to get him, get the ball away. And so there's an offensive line that sets themselves to 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 sustain the charge. And then and then I mean to stop the charge. And then you can tell I'm a baseball fan. Um, <laughs> and, and then then when, when when they charge, the job of the offensive line is to stop their momentum, and then turn it around and push them back the other way. And, 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 and clear a hole, okay? That's what God calls us to do, to take a stand. Be strong and courageous enough to move on in that strength. Or you will lead these people to inherit the land. You're going to succeed. You're going to do the job. I love, I, I, taught, I taught a class on Zoom yesterday about Zechariah 4. And God made a statement about Zerubbabel, the prince, in the time of Zechariah. And he said, he said, he said, Zechariah and said, Zerubbabel's hand will finish the temple. You know, here he, he was struggling with the fact, man, we're short of personnel, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough in, in influence at court. And God, God says, I will provide everything, everything you lack, I've got an industrious strength. And he says, lo, lo not by wealth or influence or army or strength, 
But it says below, below, below the kolat, and not by muscle power or sweat equity. You don't have enough of the of, of, of your own strength to be able to complete the job. But he says, ki bruchi, by my spirit, amar Adonai Slo. He says, I've got the power. He says, I've got everything you need. And so that's why there, there is the, the picture in that chapter of two olive trees stretching out all over the menorah. God, God says, if you don't have enough fuel to light the menorah, the lampstand, he said, he said, if I need to, I'll put trees in there and I'll squeeze the olives myself to give you the fuel you need to keep going. And so that is, that is the genius of God and the power of God. Is it only be strong and resolute to observe diligently the Torah, which Moses, my servant, commanded you? And he's talking, of course, at the time that Joshua came, came along, about all the scripture they had was the, was the book of Job and the five books of, of Moses. Um, but he, he says, be careful to observe all the scriptures. He says, don't let it out of your, of, 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 of your mouth. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the Torah shall not depart. And then he makes a very strange statement. Because when, because when I thought about this, I had read it, I, I had studied it. It was what it was, this is one of the verses that we learn as children. And we, we were taught, memorize this. Our, our teachers tell us, memorize this. Our parents tell us, memorize this. This book of the law shall not depart. I would expect it to say, out of your mind or out of your heart. But that's not what it says. What does it say? Out of your mouth. Why? Because you need to interact with it. You need to, to speak it and interact with it. Now, he's not, not talking there. Some people say, if you just confess certain things, there's a magical power in, 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 the, in, the, in the, the words of our mouths. And the scripture's not saying that. He's talking about interacting with it. The first psalm says, happy is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of those who have missed the mark. Sinners, that, that, that's what that verb, that verb ka, 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 means. It means to miss the mark. And, and, and it says, nor, nor, or sit in the seat or dwell in the dwelling of the scoffer. But his delight is in the Torah, Torah Adonai, the law of the Lord. And actually, the word Torah comes from the verb yara, which means to instruct. It's actually the instruction of the Lord. It's not just the five five books of Moses, although we tend to, to think of it that way, but he's actually, it's actually uh, in a lot of, in, in a lot of context in the scriptures, much broader than that. It is the content, the substance of all of God's word. His delight is in Torah of the mind, in the law or the instruction of the Lord, and in his, in, in, in Torah, to, in, 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 in his instruction, he meditates day and night. And that word means more than, it does not mean you sit on the bus and make strange noises. It, it means that you interact with God's word. A lot of times we just kind of read it, well, there's a religious obligation. I read my verse for the month or whatever, um, or, or even my, my chapter for the day, we close it up and, and forget it. And the power of it is meditating it, interact, playing it over in our minds. Lord God, help me. Lord, how do I apply this? Lord, is there anything that I'm missing? And that's how the word becomes a, becomes a, a, a part of you. And he says, don't let this depart out of your mouth. You are to meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will be successful. In other words, if you want to have success in life, but you, but you ignore God's word, and if you ignore God's word, you're ignoring the God who gave it, because God communicates with us through the scripture. 
And so he, he said, he said, he said, there you will make your way ways, ways, your way successful. And he says, he says, be strong. He says, Aaron, I command you, Chazak. There it is again. Be strong, and, and and do not be terrified or dismayed, for Adonai your God is with you wherever you go. And that's the most important thing that Joshua had, had to learn. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. It is the presence of the Lord that is our strength. The eighth psalm, David writes, When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars which you have ordained, ma anosh, what is man? And that word for man comes from the verb anash, which means to be sickly or weak. And the implication is clear. There is nothing we can do for God that he couldn't be better than for himself. Or have an angel do. And that we don't come to God and that God doesn't love us because of what we can do for him. He's not after your wallet. He's not after um, try, trying to squeeze you, crush you. He loves you, and so you become the junior partner in his kingdom. Ma'enosh, what is man that you keep remembering? Or the son of man, Ben Adam, literally son of the dirt. The name Adam, Adam, comes from the word Adama, which is the soil, it is the clay out of which he made us. Literally means son of the dirt. Or or the son of man that you keep visiting. Yet you have made him a little lower than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor, and you've, give, you've given him authority over the, the, the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and, and, and the beasts of, of the field, and that, and, and that our value is not what we can do for God, but what God can do through us. And the, the value that God has invested in us, in you, and in me. So we need to remind ourselves of the presence of God. In Isaiah 41.10, God says, and I close with this, Fear not, for I am with you. I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. You don't have to keep checking over your shoulder. Is God still there? Did he leave? Did he get mad at me? You know, the power of Yeshua's atonement makes it, covers up and deals with every failure that we have. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will hold you up with my righteous grace. Good news. And God says to each of us, be strong and courageous. Do not let this book of the scripture depart from your mouth. And Ka'asher Ha'iti in Moshe, just as I am with Moses, or have been with Moses, so I will be. So I am as we fail you, nor forsake you. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord God, I don't know why you gave me this passage for tonight. Lord, it's very profound. We thank you for it. We thank you for, for, the, for your nature, for your power, for who you are, O oh God. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Lord, may each person here grasp that you are with them, with them, and Lord God, there may be someone here tonight who has never gotten into the relationship receiving Yeshua and the atonement, the payment for our sins that, re that, that creates a relationship, restores relationship between you and us. And Lord, if, if there's somebody here who has never taken that step, may he or she do that tonight, Lord God, and come into that relationship, Lord God, where they can also say, I can be strong, I can be courageous, I can face the challenges of life, knowing that you will never leave me, fail me, nor forsake me, in your shoes. I'm going to ask if everybody stand for Kaddish um, this, this evening.
we're, we're going to remember five people, one of the people we want to honor. Again, the cottage is not a prayer, a prayer for the dead. It is a blessing on the Lord, uh, very much in the spirit of Psalm 30, 34.1, which, which says, um, which, which says, I will bless them at all times. Uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will never depart from my mouth. Um, so one, one person we want to honor to, to remember this evening is Bishop Byron Johnson, who passed, passed away in the way with him today. And then today I talked to uh, Jane Weiner, and she asked who would say cottage for uh, her, her, her husband, Don, who uh, passed away just a few weeks ago. And, uh, and so we, we, will, we will remember Don. And then Jack Krell, who, uh, and some of you know Mark Krell, he, he can't come right out because he has to work at night, so he's not able to, to be here. But I, I, think, I think his family is watching, uh, is watching the live stream. And, and uh, Jack Krell is Mark's father. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. Um, and then, um, and, and, and then uh, Kim, Kim uh, Richardson's father passed away last 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 Saturday. Herbert Smith, and he passed away in he, 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 he passed away in Nevada. And oh yeah, oh yeah, Thelma Jenkins uh, passed away at this season of the year too. So we want to remember all of them with the words of, of the Connor. So so please please join and you know. Uh, we do something that is really not traditional, and that is the, the, the tradition is that only the mourners, only the people very, very close to the person who passed away, uh, stand and join in the cottage. Uh, but the scriptures say that we are to not only uh, rejoice with those who rejoice, but weep with those who weep, and that the joys of one are the joys of all of us. And the sorrows of one are the sorrows of all of, of, all of us, because we are mishpocha, we're family. So please join in the, in the words of the Kaddish. And then, um, and then Nathaniel will lead in the Ahamida and the Lincoln. Yikadal the Yikadash Mehra, Balmadi Brakirze, Bialim Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Ha'el Hagadol. 
Ayatol HaGibor Bahanora, El Elyon, Gomel Hasadim Tovim, Bekone Hako, Bezocher Hazdeavot, Umeyi Goel Libne Benehem, Lemaan Shmo Bahava, Melech Hoser Moshiach Kumakem, Baruch Ata Adonai, Magen Abraham, Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai, Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Jacob, the great, mighty, revered, and exalted God, the grand, loving kindness, and this master of all. Mindful of the patriarchs' love for you, you have brought a redeemer to their children's children, for the sake of your name. O King, Helper, Savior, and Shield, blessed are you, O Lord, Shield of Abraham. You, O Lord, are mighty forever. You raise the dead for your mighty salvation. Amen. Please turn with me towards Jerusalem in the east as we sail.